And we're back. Chapter 4. Pirate Ships, page 55. Over the centuries, pirates have roamed the seas in many different kinds of ships. Most early pirate ships were galleys. This is a Greek galley. Suck. A galley is a big rowboat with sails. When there was a good wind, a galley's sails were used for extra speed. The Barbary Corsairs had huge galleys. It took nearly a hundred men to row them. They also carried troops of soldiers. These ships almost never went on long ocean voyages. There were so many men, there was hardly any room for supplies. Oh, cool. If you take a super close look at that picture, you can see all the men on it. It says that it took about a hundred men to row it. So there wasn't any room for any supplies. Interesting. Sailing ships. During the golden age of pirates, most pirate ships were sailing ships. They used the wind to carry them on their long voyages in search of treasure. These sailing ships were alike in many ways. They were all made of wood. They all had large sails made of heavy cloth. The sails hung from beams called yard arms. The yard arms were attached to tall poles called masts. Pirate sailing ships all had space for storing supplies and treasure. Most carried several cannons and smaller guns for attacking other ships at sea. And Jack tells us that a cannon is a large gun usually mounted on wheels. You guys probably know what a cannon is. Page 58, kinds of sailing ships. There are many different kinds of sailing ships. Sloops. Oh, that's a fun word too. Say sloops. Sloops were a favorite kind of ship for pirates. They are small ships with only one mast. Pirate sloops couldn't hold as many guns or men as larger ships, but in battle they could move around more easily. Best of all, sloops were very fast. Speed was important to pirates. Their ships had to be fast to catch ships they wanted to attack. They also had to be fast to escape from ships attacking them. Schooners and brigantines have two masts. They are also very fast. Schooners were popular with American privateers in the late 1700s and early 1800s. Page 60. Barks have three or more masts. They are slower than smaller sailing ships, but some pirates liked barks because they could carry more guns and more treasure. So you can take your time to look at the different parts of this ship. And then when you're ready, you can turn to page 65. Chapter 5 is called The Pirate's Life. Pirates were thieves, murderers, and kidnappers. They didn't obey the laws of any land. They did, however, obey rules on board their ships. Pirates called their rules the Articles. The Articles told the men how to behave on board. They listed punishments for breaking the rules. They explained how stolen treasure would be shared by the crew and captain. So I think it was like the last, um, a couple chapters ago, like in the last video, where um, it said that sometimes they were um, on sea for years at a time. Somebody was, um, was it Sir Francis Drake? Somebody was sailing for three years. Um, doo -doo -doo. somebody was sailing around for three years. Yeah, it was Sir Francis Drake. Um, his voyage took three years. So obviously, if you're traveling around the world with the same crew and you guys are together for three years, you need to have some kind of laws or some kind of rules, right, to make sure that everybody's following directions and doing what needs to be done. So that's called the articles. So on the next page, there's a picture and it says every pirate ship had its own set of articles. So they weren't always the same, but here are some common rules. So these are usually found on a ship. It says, number one, every man in the crew shall get an equal share of what is stolen. No fighting, no gambling, no women allowed on board ship. Women's mu uh, weapons must be kept clean and ready. Punishment for stealing, running away from a fight, or keeping secrets is death. Page 67, Pirate Captains. 
There were many jobs on a pirate ship. The most important job was that of the captain. The captain led the crew in battle. He also navigated the ship. This means he was in charge of getting the ship where it was supposed to go. A pirate captain had to follow the articles, too. If he didn't do a good job, oh, the crew might throw him overboard and elect a new captain. But even if the captain did a good job, the crew still had lots of power. They voted to decide where the ship would travel. They voted on where and when to go ashore, and they voted on whether or not to attack a ship they met at sea. Well, because you got to figure there's a lot more crew than one captain. Can't really run off a ship, I guess. The ship's quartermaster also had an important job. The quartermaster decided what to steal from a captured ship. He divided up what the pirates stole, he handed out the food, and he told each man what work to do on board the ship. Pirate crews had to work hard to keep their ships in good shape. Sails and ropes had to be mended, cannons had to be cleaned, and decks had to be washed. Page 70. Food was hard to find on long sea voyages. Sometimes pirates took a few chickens on board for eggs. They also took dried meat and stale biscuits. The biscuits were called hardtack. Ew. Stories say pirates ate them in the dark so they wouldn't see the bugs inside, you guys. Blech. Pirates who were at sea for a long time sometimes got a disease called scurvy. For many years, no one knew what caused scurvy. Doctors finally learned that it was caused by a lack of vitamin C. British, oh, Jack says, British sailors were nicknamed limeys because they ate limes to prevent scurvy. Good idea. Fresh drinking water was hard to come by on long voyages. Pirates could not drink water from the salty sea. Obviously, it's got salt in it. It'll dry you out and make you thirstier. So their ships carried barrels of beer and bottles of wine and, rum, wine and rum. I can't talk. Long voyages often meant many days with little to do. Life on board ship could get boring. To pass the time, pirates gambled with dice. They sometimes fought with one another. The articles often had rules against gambling and fighting. It was the quartermaster's job to hand out punishments to anyone who broke the rules. Annie says, yikes, there were lots of rats on pirate ships. They ate everything, even the wood of the ship. Yuck. Pirate punishments. Oh, you guys know about this. Walk the plank. Arg. In some stories about pirates, a person who broke the rules was made to walk the plank. The person was blindfolded, his hands were tied, a wide plank was put over the ship's side. The person walked to the end of the plank, then he fell into the sea. There is not much... Oh, well that just burst in my bubble. <whistles> Popped my bubble. Says there is not much proof, though, that walking the plank actually happened in real life. Who teaches us these things and then just takes it away from us just like that? Pirates who broke the rules were much more likely to be whipped or shot. Another terrible punishment was called marooning. Oh, I know what that is. People who were marooned were taken to a deserted island. Look at this guy. He just looks so sad. You could just tell by the way he's standing. He's sad. They were taken to a deserted island. They were put off the ship. They were kicked off. The ship then sailed away, leaving the person alone. The deserted island was usually tiny. The marooned person would starve to death, drown, or die of thirst. He was often left with a gun so he could take his own life. Very weird. Ooh, I love this. Turn to page 74 with me. Jack and Annie talk like a pirate. Show a leg means get up. Pirates slept in hammocks. When they started to get out of a hammock, they would show a leg over the side. Lubber is a clumsy sailor. We're going to hear that word in our book, too. Lubber is short for landlubber, a person who is happier on land than at sea. 
Do you guys watch SpongeBob? You guys watch SpongeBob. I know it. I'm sorry I asked. Davy Jones Locker. You guys know exactly what that is. Davy Jones Locker is the bottom of the ocean. In the 1630s, a pirate named David Jones decided to sink a ship that he and his crew had attacked. After that, pirates said that anything sunk or thrown overboard, including people, were sent to Davy Jones' locker. Shiver me timbers means, oh wow, pirates called a ship's mast timbers. The timbers would shiver or shake in a storm. And you guys know what matey means. Matey means friend. Sailors from the same ship are called shipmates. Matey is short for shipmate. Arg. Page 77, Chapter 6, Pirate Treasure. Then another break for you guys. Why were pirates willing to put up with terrible living conditions at sea? Why were they willing to be so mean and cruel? Why were they willing to risk dying for their crimes? For most pirates, the answer was simple. Money. One successful raid on a treasure ship could make all the members of a pirate crew rich for the rest of their lives. <laughs> this is one of our um, chapters in our book. Remember I told you that there's a chapter called Vile Booty? <laughs> booty. Jack says, booty is anything of value taken by force from an enemy. Pirates called their stolen treasure booty. For pirates, the best booty was gold. Gold was prized all over the world. Pirates dreamed of capturing ships full of gold coins, gold bars, or gold jewelry. Annie tells us that Spanish gold coins were called doubloons. Eight doubloons were worth a whole year's pay for a regular sailor. Age 79. Silver was also very valuable booty. Silver coins were called pieces of eight. That's because each coin was worth eight Spanish reales. Reales, about $23 today. Unfortunately for pirates, very few trading ships carried treasure chests filled with gold and silver. So the pirates usually had to settle for other booty. When pirates captured a ship, they took almost anything of value. They stole tobacco, spices, and sugar to sell when they reached land. They stole jewelry from the passengers. They stole guns, swords, and daggers from the crew. Pirates also stole sails and ropes to use on their own ship. They stole food, water, beer, and wine to share among themselves. They stole any medicine they could find too, and medicine was thought to be great booty because pirates suffered so much disease. We already read about that. Some pirates even stole the whole ship. They turned it into a pirate ship and forced the crew to join them. The choice they gave the crew was simple. Join us or die. Annie tells us that Blackbeard's famous pirate ship, the Queen Anne's Revenge, was once a French trading ship. So on page 81, there's our list of pirate booty, all the things we just talked about. And now we have to talk about sharing it. The articles for a ship had strict rules about how booty was to be shared. Most members of the crew got an equal part of everything that was stolen. The captain, quartermaster, and the ship's doctor usually got a little more than everyone else. The punishment for anyone who tried to keep more than his share of the booty was death or marooning, buried treasure. There are many stories about pirates burying chests full of booty on secret islands. The pirates in the stories often make maps showing where the treasure is buried. The truth is that pirates hardly ever buried their treasure. In real life, they usually divided the booty soon after it was stolen. Then each man spent most of his share as soon as he was on land again. Another thing that you learn and then it turns out to be a lie. There may not be any pirate treasure still buried on secret islands, but there is definitely pirate treasure at the bottom of the ocean. Over the years, many pirate ships sank in storms. Others went down in battle. When a pirate ship sank, its treasure sank with it. For centuries, people have searched for sunken pirate ships. None were ever found until undersea divers recently made two amazing discoveries.
Dun, dun, dun. Sunken pirate ships. The Widow. In 1984, a sea explorer named Barry Clifford found items from the wreck of the pirate ship Widow. The Widow was sunk off the coast of Massachusetts in 1717. It had belonged to a pirate called Black Sam Bellamy. The Widow was filled with gold and silver coins. And the Queen Anne's Revenge. In 1996, a research team discovered another sunken ship. This one was off the coast of North Carolina. The research team is now almost sure it is Blackbeard's ship, the Queen Anne's Revenge. All right, chapter seven. You guys can pause. Now we're going to finish the book. See you in a minute.